I'm new at server, and I'm inside this really tall tower that I built. And stairs in Minecraft suck for tall buildings. So, we've got elevators. And there's three of them here, and these elevators are really cool because they're really different. They are fully automatic. Well, almost fully automatic. I'm still working on a few little things with them, but... What's neat about them is that they can go up and down, and you can set floors for them to stop at, and it'll know which way to travel. It'll handle all the floors going up first, before it handles all the floors going down, and the opposite. So, let's just do a demonstration. First of all, I'm going to show one little thing here. Outside the elevator, there's a light here, and in, on the elevator car, there's a chime. If the light flashes and the chime dings, it means that the elevator is about to move again. So, hurry up and get inside or get out of it. So, and obviously, this is the call button. And I put some little instructions over here for people that don't know how it works. Anyway, so, now my friends here are all going to go get into the elevator cars, and they're going to go take, a, take it for a ride, and I'm going to go fly on the outside to show. So, let me just go on outside. And they'll all go to different floors. It's going to lag a little bit because it's moving the car and teleporting the teleporting each of them at the same time. So, you'll see, yeah, you're seeing them move, but the cars aren't moving. It's just a visual glitch. Ooh. So, all right. It plays when it's the same floor. When do you go, when do you go to 10? I'm staying. Yeah, I'll go to 10. All right. <laughs> all right, so now... I'm going to go call the middle elevator down to the bottom floor, and I'm going to demonstrate how it stops to pick up everyone. So, everybody out? Yep. Tyler, you out? Yeah, I am. Alright, so I'm going to call the middle elevator down, and wait for it, wait for it, Just wait for floor. it. There it is. Now, the reason why I'm using glass for the doors is because regular doors glitch out too much, especially with the, the call button. So, And the reason why I'm using glass instead of a solid block is because glass doesn't drop anything. So now that I'm inside the elevator car, I'm just going to wait here, and everyone will press the call button for the middle elevator, and we'll watch how it picks them up. Push my button. Hey, Derek's. Hello. Who's next? There is a time delay. There we go. Hello, Tyler. There we go. And there's Sam. Huzzah. Nice. So now we're going to do one more thing. So now we're going to do something else here. I'm going to select a floor. As you can see, when you hit the button, it shows in the chat. And it uses click events to click the floor you want to go to. So we're all going to go to the 10th floor. And i like one of you to get off. And now we're going to go to 14. I'd like someone to get off. And now we're going to go to 6. And I'd like Sam to get off. What I want to demonstrate now is the elevator's ability to serve calls in one direction before doing another direction. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have Tyler and Derek press their call buttons. And once the elevator starts moving, I'm going to have Sam press his call button. So we can demonstrate it'll move away from the floor that we're on now. It'll pick up those two, then it'll reverse direction and go back down and pick up Sam. So, no. Tyler and Derek's, go ahead. Okay. Which one? Right. Sam, go ahead. So it went up. Now the controller is going to reverse direction, and we are going to go back down. Automatically. Hello, Sam. Hey, bro. All right, now we're going to go all the way back down to the bottom floor. And I want to show some stuff about how the machine room works. So I'll need you guys to operate the elevator so that I can show how that works. So we just head on down to the machine room, which is down this little stairway over here. So the machine room is huge. There's three controllers, because obviously there's three elevators, and I decorated it a little bit. There's some catwalks and some pipes and stuff, so just because I like decorating. So I'm going to do elevator number three, which is the one all the way on the left. So basically how this works is that I've got this stuff in here. This is called the direction controller. And basically, I've got a pair of rails down here. You notice how the elevator is currently on 
whatever floor this is. I don't know, but who cares? And here's how there's two tracks. There's one for down and one for up. If somebody calls the... Someone call Unit 3 from the first floor. All right, it turned on the down circuit and is moving down. And when it hits that block, it stops automatically. So someone call someone call unit three again from an upper floor, please. Hello. Notice how the track has switched sides. Uh, call it from ten, please. Oh, or that that works. What floor was that? Uh, oh, fail. All right, now. Can someone go to 2 and someone go to 14 and both call, please? I want to demonstrate how it switches direction. So basically what will happen here is it will power these circuits. And, and these pistons over here are designed to isolate the circuits so that only one can operate at a time. And once it finishes, it will unisolate and the other circuit will come on and isolate the first circuit. So one of them is going to call a floor above the current elevator position and one's going to call the a floor below the current elevator position, and you'll notice it'll go up and then down, or down and then up, depending on which way, which order they do it in. So, go ahead. Left three. Go ahead, both of you. Nice. Alright, looks like three, looks like, two, yeah, two was first. So it went down to two, and you didn't do the other floor. Uh, Someone yeah. wasn't paying attention. I did it. You did? Yeah. Well, it didn't, re it didn't register well. then. It didn't register then. All right, I'll I'll just do it manually from the elevator controller. So, actually, I'll I'll just do it manually from the elevator controller then. It's be a nice great view. video, yeah. huh? Nice view of beta. Ah, crap! I didn't want to break those repeaters. I wanted to break the wires in front of them. There we go. So basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to power some call buttons, but I'm going to make it so that the elevator will not move until I tell it to. So as you can see, we powered the green track, and we have powered, I'm going to power this one, which powers the red track. So it's going to go up first, and then down first, because that's the order I'm going to power them in. So, you notice how the red track's powered and the green track is powered. So power, I'll connect the green track. As you can see, it isolated the red, and then I'll power the red track, and it'll wait. So it goes up, and then it switches direction. Now the green is isolated, and the red is not. And it's processing. And there we go. So now there is a timer. This there is a timer thing right here made out of hoppers that controls how long it waits before moving to another floor. So that's how the controller knows which way which way it needs to go. Now these things over here are the call buttons. And there is this thing that I call a, that I call a wiper, which basically when you hit a call button, someone hit a call button, please, on unit three. Okay. On three, right? Yeah, three. Oh, you're actually up four because. All right. Well. Right here. And I hit it. All right. So you notice how the stone block disappears, and when the and when the slider rolls over the stone block, it momentarily changes to redstone block, which powers the stop track, and then it changes back to stone. So. Pretty simple how it works. It's a little complicated, but a little bit simple at the same time. So, then of course I got some manual controls here, and the door control is over here. I can override the door control if I want, and the call button inputs are over here. The reason why there's a whole bunch of repeaters, or I mean comparators and command blocks, is because the buttons on the floors are wireless because they couldn't fit in the command block, and these basically just detect for the button being pressed, and when they do, it applies power to the elevator to the correct input, and then there it goes. Now, I had to close up those blocks. Now the second row on the top, the second row of com command blocks on the top right here, is for the elevator car button. Now the reason why you have to do this is because in order to set the elevator car using a click event in a in a tell raw, it runs as the player and you have to use a trigger which is a special scoreboard function because you can't run commands like set block from a non-op player. So, looks like someone just rode one of the elevators. Or something. Or some glass breaking. Anyway. That was just Tyler breaking a big pile of glass. <laughs> oh. You guys are goofing around apparently. <laughs> so yeah, there's an elevator controller for each elevator. 
And I designed these to be clonable, and they install fairly quickly. So, that's it for the control room, which is in the basement. Now I'm going to go up to the attic of the building, where there is a machine room. So, if anybody wants to come with me, they can. Somewhere. I made it. Are you guys coming with? Alright. Here we go. Ah! We left Derek's. Well, he'll have to you, um... go up to 15 then. <laughs> There we are, 15th floor. There we go. So to access the attic, we have to go to the stairwell in this building. Stairwells suck. Yes, they do. But we only have to go up one floor, so it's not bad. I don't mind stairs. What? What? Oh, what the? I don't mind stairs. Minecraft. Oh. Mine stairs. Staircraft. So, for anybody this is wondering. More roof. So, anybody wondering, this building was based off the Lloyd's of London building in London obviously, <laughs> where everything, every, like, machine and utility thing is on the outside of the building instead of on the inside. It's kind of a unique form of architecture. So in here we've got the three elevator machines, and these actually are what move the elevator car and teleport the player. The controller just sends commands up to them to make them move. Now these three things that turn off are a chime, a passing chime, inside the elevator that goes ding every time you pass a floor, but it was driving some people crazy, so I turned it off. So that's basically the controllers and the machines, and that's really it for the elevators, so now I'm going to go for a ride back on down. Yee. Ah, it's like stuck. There we go. Got stuck on a wall. I don't so, like I can't see if I'm going. There's too many people going one down one direction. What? There's too many people walking down that set of stairs. I couldn't see where I was going. <laughs> Fail. You got blinded by the people. Alright. By the people. What is, like, humming? Something's humming. No, someone just turned on the shower. Oh, okay, that's really loud, wow. Yeah, I know. Uh, is, that like a, is that, like, a pulsating head or something? So now let's no, do... No, that's, let's, not, that's not even the shower part. Let's actually do one more demonstration here, okay? Everybody pick a different... Everybody pick a floor. Alright. Yeah. Alright, so I'll go 8. I'm going like going eight. Oh, we're on 15. I'll go I'll go eight. 8. It's not registering. There we go. It doesn't like my click. That was. Oh, the 8 button doesn't work for some reason. Uh, I got off at the wrong floor. Yeah, I haven't done the floor indicator yet because 1.9 compatibility issues. So. 1.9 sucks. Yeah, well, it has some issues. So, we'll see. I think it did go to the wrong Okay. And that's pretty much it for the highly advanced elevators made by the MindTech Corporation, whose office building is actually visible over there in the distance. So, uh, thanks guys for helping me make this video. Woo! And yeah, thanks everyone for sitting through this video because my explanation was a little bit long. So, woohoo! Putting up with our ugly mugs. <laughs> that too. All right, <laughs> everyone to do the best they can and bow. Like you'd have to like do the shift, so like be more like sticking your butt out. Working. I could do like uh, a Toby McGuire freak out. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everyone.